What's up guys, my name is Fran and once again, welcome back. And in this episode of The Struggle, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to set up your own virtualization server. So what is a VM or virtualization server? Well, pretty much it is a computer that runs a number of other computers on top of it. A lot of people are a lot more familiar with an application called VirtualBox or VMware Fusion for Mac, and it pretty much is the exact same concept, except a virtualization server is actually able to run a lot more than just one VM. A virtualization server also gives you the ability to run these applications more autonomously, giving you the ability to do things such as create snapshots and restore a disaster recovery and a number of other features that aren't featured in more of a consumer application like VMware Fusion or VirtualBox. So why would anyone want to run a virtualization server in the first place? Well, there's a number of reasons. Maybe you want an environment that's easily destructible so you can test out those Usenet or torrent downloads that might look a little bit shady and you don't want to infect your main computer. Or maybe you want an environment, uh, you're practicing some network security and you want to use Kali Linux and do some pen testing and brute forcing and one had a dedicated uh, operating system to do all of that. You can do that as well in a virtualization server. Now for me personally, I'm moving a little bit more towards DevOps and network security. So I definitely am, uh, um, you know, of course I could run a lot of these uh, applications and VMs up in Amazon Web Services or AWS, but that actually can be really expensive if you're familiar with AWS. Uh, and of course I do know applications are moving more towards the containerization of things, but that is a subject for an entire other video. For now we're going to be focusing on uh, this VM server and how we can get it up and running. Okay, so before we begin, there are gonna be a number of prerequisites. First off, you're gonna need a working Windows-based computer. Now, there are ways to do this in Linux and Mac OS, but for this particular video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the easy method of using Rufus inside of Windows. Next, you're gonna need an actual thumb drive. Now, I recommend something around eight gigabytes, uh, but it could be a little bit smaller. I think eight to 16 is actually perfectly fine, though. Next, you're going to need a Windows or Linux-based operating system ISO file. Now, as far as Linux-based operating systems goes, they're all pretty much downloadable around the web for free. You can pick up things like Ubuntu or even Kali Linux. As far as Windows goes, you might need to create those if you have a Windows disk. So you can simply use the Windows DVD download tool to actually create that. Or you might just have the ISO file already. And then finally, you are going to need some hardware to run it on. Now, for me personally, I do recommend using some older uh, used hardware. There's plenty of server-grade hardware out there on eBay that maybe might cost you $100, $200 for a multi-core system. Now, for me personally, as far as the hardware I'm going to be using, I'm setting mine up on this system right here. So this is actually a super micro uh, ITX motherboard. I don't exactly remember the chipset, but it is running uh, 1151 uh, socket, so I do have an i7-6700K processor sitting inside of this computer here. Uh, it's also going to be using some laptop memory, so I do just have about 16 gigabytes of laptop memory, and I'm going to be setting up with the Pico power supply because I wanted it to be really small and sit inside of a really small form factor case because I don't really have a lot of room here in the studio for actually running this virtualization server. Okay, so now that we've got everything that we need for this tutorial, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. Okay, so now that we have all of our prerequisites gone ahead and fulfilled, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna do on the working computer that already has Windows installed and ready to go, we're actually gonna go ahead and launch um, um, Chrome or whatever browser. We're gonna go ahead and download to the link in the video description below. Now, this is gonna take you to VMware's website where you can actually download uh, the application we're gonna be using for virtualization, which is called uh, VMware ESXi. Now, um, I will leave a link to everything I mentioned in the video description below. So if I mention it and I don't, you know, just go ahead and, you know, check the, the video description, you'll find the link to download it. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and download our VMware vSphere Hypervisor 6.5. At the time of recording this video, this is the most recent version of VMware. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded it for the sake of time. Next, we're going to go ahead and download an application called Rufus. Um, this is actually going to allow us to turn the ISO that we've actually uh, downloaded here into a bootable ISO so we can go ahead and install it on our virtualization computer. So you're going to go ahead and download Rufus, uh, navigate down here, and you're going to go ahead and grab that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stick my USB flash drive into my computer and uh, we're gonna go ahead and prep it. So uh, Rufus is most likely gonna already do this for us, but I like to do this just as a uh, peace of mind. So we're gonna go ahead and right click on it. We're gonna hit format and then we are gonna make sure it's set for FAT32. I just like to name it USB. We're gonna hit the start button, boom. and our flash drive is formatted and ready to go. So now we're gonna go ahead to our downloads folder or wherever we downloaded uh, the Rufus application and we're gonna go ahead and launch that.
Okay, so now that we have our Rufus application, uh, go on ahead and load up. What we're gonna actually do is we're going to, uh, you know, make sure all this looks correct. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this section here. And instead of free DOS, we're gonna go to um, ISO image. We're gonna click on this button here. We're gonna navigate to that VMware uh, ISO that we downloaded earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and we're gonna hit the start button. Yep, go. Okay, so now that our drive is done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, eject it. Just a force of habit to eject my drives. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch over to our ESXi computer, the one we're gonna be installing it on, and now we're gonna go ahead and start that process. All right, so now we've actually moved over to our computer that we're gonna be using as a virtualization server. Now, uh, the next step is just to boot off of the USB flash drive. Now, every single computer has a different process, but generally most of them are either going to be uh, the F11 key or possibly escape going into the BIOS and then selecting the flash drive as the boot option. Okay, so now that we're booted, we'll be entered onto the screen here. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit the enter key. Uh, if you want to, you can accept the license agreement. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to move forward. And it's gonna scan for hard drives. Now, assuming you actually have also attached a hard drive to this computer, which is actually a pretty important part of this installation guide, we're actually gonna go ahead and install the operating system uh, on the hard drive. I'm gonna just go and select my M.2 SSD. And we're gonna go ahead and let it uh, install the operating, the ESXi operating system on that drive. US default. Uh, here's also where you're going to uh, set your password. So I'm just gonna set a real simple password because, okay, great. Gone ahead and selected a password. Then now we're gonna hit F11 and this is gonna actually get our installation going. All right, so now that we've actually completed this step, we're gonna go ahead and just go ahead and um, you know, hit enter. We're gonna go ahead and reboot our server, and now we're gonna boot into the ESXi operating system. All right, so it might actually take some time, but once your system is finally uh, booted, you will be to you'll be on this screen here. Now, this is the operating system, this is it. There's a very few options you can actually do. But that's because most of the, um, the resources for this particular operating system is dedicated to running those virtual machines. So that's why it's literally just this one screen. Uh, all right, so basically the only information you really need from here is actually the uh, IP address of the VM server. Now, then what we're gonna do is now we're gonna switch back over to our Windows based or at this point, it doesn't really matter what the operating system is. As long as the computer has a browser, we're gonna switch back over and we're gonna continue our setup process. Okay, so now that we're back on our, uh, in particular for me, I'm on my Windows based PC, I'm gonna navigate to the operating system or to the IP address that we saw on our ESXi server. You're gonna be presented with this warning, that's because you don't have a signed certificate. In this video, I'm not gonna be teaching you guys how to do a self-signed certificate, but if you're familiar with the process, you can do a self-sign or you can uh, figure that portion out. But it's okay because you know this actual source uh, it's actually your server, but be careful with these type of warnings around the internet. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just log in. The username name by default is root, and you're gonna go ahead and type in that password that you created. And then voila, you are now on your ESXi server. So this is actually uh, primarily the, the, the interface you're actually gonna be working with when it actually comes to the ESXi server. So what you can do from here is you can actually start creating your virtual machine. So for me, I'm gonna, um, first off, the first place you actually need to start before you actually get into virtualization or virtual machines is in your storage because you need an image or an operating system to actually uh, load onto the hard drive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, you know, we're gonna actually, I believe we need to do our data store browser. So we already have a data store. So I'm just gonna create a folder here. We're just gonna name it OS. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload our Ubuntu operating system. And this also is the same exact process for Windows that you'll see, but I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to find my, here we go, Ubuntu desktop, 64 bit. I'm going to let this download. Okay, so now that we have actually finished uploading our operating system onto our data store, what we're now gonna actually do is go ahead and install our first operating system. So we're gonna navigate over here to our virtual machines and we're gonna go to create. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. Now, to be honest with you, this process is exactly the same for all the other operating systems. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, um, first off, you're gonna pick a name. So I'm just gonna name this Ubuntu for the sake of time. And then we're gonna hit this drop down and we wanna stick with the newest version. There's no reason to, that's pretty much for legacy and other pieces of software, but we're gonna select our guest OS. Now you have the ability to do Linux 
uh, Mac OS as well as Windows. Now, um, Mac OS, I'm not going to show you guys in this video. You do, it does require maybe two more steps. It's pretty simple, um, but I think it's against Apple's terms of service and they're pretty good at taking down videos that show it. So, uh, we are just going to focus on Linux today and it's the same process for Windows though. But Mac OS, if you do do that, you need a special unlock application that you can find on the internet. Uh, anyway, so I'll go to Linux and I will select my guest operating system. I'm going to just drop down to Ubuntu and I'm doing the 64 bit version. So I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And then what we're going to do here is just going to select where we want it to, to be stored. Now, if you have more than one hard drive, maybe you might have a separate hard drive to store all of your operating system, uh, all of your VMs. And then the other, the main disc is actually storing your operating system. So a lot of people do that for redundancy and making sure you don't lose data. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just select this because the basic setup, uh, we're going to customize our settings. Here is where you would select how many CPUs you want to, um, a lot to the actual VM. So for example, you can have two CPUs, three P CPUs, four. Now the number that you have here actually is based on the core. So remember how I said there's a 6,700 K. So it has four cores and eight threads, which technically has eight virtual processors. So I'm just going to go ahead and select, let's select four for now. Uh, and then we're going to up the RAM. So I'm going to switch this from megabytes to gigabytes. I'm just going to go four gigabytes of RAM. Now the hard disk is where you set that size. So I'm going to just make it, we'll just make it 30. I mean, Ubuntu doesn't really need a lot of storage. So let's make it 30 for the sake of this video. Uh, and here's a pretty important part. So what you want to now do is you want to add another device. So you want to add a CD slash DVD drive. And then what you want to actually do is you want to go ahead and hit from host device. Uh, what this actually means is that you have a CD drive on your actual computer and you want to actually load the operating system from that. It's 2018. Most computers don't have, uh, don't have CD drive. So we're going to go with the data store ISO file, which we just uploaded. It's going to open up this window. We're going to navigate to that Ubuntu download. We're going to hit select. We're going to make sure this little checkbox that says connect at power on is checked. We're going to hit next and then we're going to go ahead and hit finish. Now, what you'll notice is down here, you'll see the operation complete. What we can do is actually just click on our uh, VM. We're going to hit power on. And if we click on this little window here, we'll actually see a virtual window running our operating system. Now, the really cool thing about this is we can have multiple operating systems running at the exact same time. Uh, we can do a number of, you know, different things like have it automatically take a copy of our operating system every single night. We can, you know, have it start up with the computer. So if you ever do any upgrades or it shuts off for any particular reason, it'll power right back on to the operating system. But as you can see, I could go ahead and install Ubuntu right here. Um, now, if I want to access this over on my network, I can simply just find the operating, the uh, IP address inside the operating system. I can SSH, I can do whatever I need to do to this actual computer. And it acts as if it's uh, connected to your actual network. And that is pretty much it. That is ESXi. Now there's a whole lot more to this application, more than I have time for. Uh, if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comment section below or try to do some research on the internet. There's a ton of people who use this application on their everyday enterprise environments. And it also works really well for your home network as well. Okay, so that is going to wrap it up for this quick tutorial. I'm sorry about all the crazy exposure issues at the beginning of the video. I do have a lot of sunlight coming in and out of the studio, and it's a little bit hard for me to control that. But either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out. If I did, uh, or you guys have any questions, do me a favor, let me know in the comment section below. Also write down there if you like this video and you want to see more tutorials like this, do me a favor, hit that like button. Also, uh, if you want to see more Docker or more technical things like this, or more specifically, uh, maybe I can get into some containerization of applications like using Docker and Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. Do me a favor, also let me know in the comment section below. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of The Struggle, and I will see you guys in my next video.